All right, guys, how you doing? It's Rubia. I hope you're all well. So this video is about my journey with seven string guitars. I've never really spent a lot of time playing them uh, for no real reason. Just I always gravitate towards six strings. That's what I grew up playing. Uh, I did a video relatively recently about playing seven string, how I got on with it, what I thought about it, how it kind of felt, all that kind of stuff. So I'll put a link to that video in the description box if you want to check that out. But this video is a little bit more subjective because I wanted to compare it with a baritone because that's what I went towards because I didn't play seven strings and I wanted to play in lower tunings. So things like drop A and B and even lower and things like that, I decided rather than get into seven string because it felt quite alien to me, I'm gonna go and do baritone guitars. Um, and Chapman very kindly made me a baritone signature along with my normal scale length guitar, which you know is the ML3 beer, which is this. And uh, yeah, basically, I absolutely love this guitar. I've written a lot of cool tunes with it, well, to me at least. And uh, it definitely, I identify with this guitar very much so. Um, but that being said, I now have a seven string guitar, which is this. This is the Chapman ML7 Pro in Luna. Uh, as you can see on the close-up camera, it's an absolutely stunning guitar, uh, much like the ML1 Pro, but with an extra string. Um, and this was a result of speaking to them after making that video and saying, I'd really like to try getting to seven string. So they sent me one, which was very kind of them, and it's awesome. It's a really, really nice guitar. So this video isn't about which one's better or anything like that, which one sounds better, which one looks better, or anything to do with that. It's really just a curiosity thing. I want to play both. Bearing in mind it's going to take me some time to get used to it and start to learn new things with it, I thought, why not just make this video and share the journey with you guys, um, and you can give me your thoughts and opinions and stuff in the comments section. And really, I just wanted to play some heavy stuff and some ambient stuff, the kind of things I like to do on both, and just share my thoughts and see what you think because if you're in the market for an extended range guitar or wanting to play lower tuning this video may help you in terms of which one you you might gravitate towards more or less so basically i'm gonna i've got my super kraken hooked up to the torpedo studio uh, and my kemper uh, running on a profile i really love which is like a matchless profile from michael Britt um for the ambient stuff and it's all going into the apollo x8p interface and i just figured Let's just go ahead and play some stuff and see what you think and I'll share my thoughts along the way. Okay, so we're gonna start with like heavy stuff. This guitar is tuned to standard, but I've dropped the bottom string to A. So we're gonna be in the same uh, tuning. Well, it's both gonna be drop A between the baritone and this. Here we go. <laughs> So I talked about this in the other video, 
having to get used to the way a scale shape is in the sense that you've got an extra string so sudden somehow it changes and when you when I think I'm on the G string I'm not I'm on the D string and that just takes a little bit of like oh you need to think about it there and then kind of thing the first thing I'm going to say is it is really nice being able to play down in drop A and then still be able to play pentatonic A minor position 1 you know <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, that is a cool thing to be able to do that. So that's one plus for me in the sense that at least when writing material that's down in drop A, I can grab this guitar or track with this guitar and do the lead on this because normally I'll play in a higher register anyway. So it's nice to be able to do that, irrespective of the fact that it does feel a little bit alien in terms of where my hands have to go. The other thing I was going to say is I think the wider neck makes the guitar sound different. Dare I say it's got more of a genty sound, like that kind of rounded mid thing. <laughs> To me, that sounds like it's it's it has that something about the tone of it, and I think that's down to the the width of the neck. There's the fact that it's wider, there's more wood, because if I pick up my baritone, obviously it's different woods, but I've, somehow I've always felt like a baritone guitar doesn't have that same rounded midi kind of lends itself to that progressive metal sound. Could be completely wrong, but um, John. If you're watching this, which you will because you edit this video, keep this in. But what I want you to do is I'm going to chug on this and then I'm going to grab the baritone and do the same and just edit them back to back so everybody in YouTube can see what I'm trying to say. What's funny is I've immediately just picked this up to do that test and now you've heard the two beside each other. Comment right now if you think I'm sort of leaning towards the right thing. It feels like the, bar um, the seven string with the wider neck has that tone to it, whereas this is like... It's more focused around a th sort of thick mid-range as opposed to that which has that kind of rounded, girthy sort of like honk, like a, like a like genty honk. It's also worth pointing out that this is way brighter. A, the wood is more is dense because it's Paduk. Um, they've both got ebony boards, stainless steel frets, but this is uh, Paduk, so it's dense compared to maple. On top of the fact that I've got Ragnaroks in here and they're the Chapman stock pickups, so there's a lot more brightness and articulation. <laughs> This definitely isn't the same to play lead on. I don't think it's harder. There's a wound G string and it's a six string, so it does feel slightly more uncomfortable, I'd say, in terms of like what I'm used to when I'm playing lead. You know, like it, it something about this is definitely, it's like it's it's built for chords and rhythm and, and soundscapes and ambience and stuff. It's particularly the, the string gauge that I've got of this and the way it's set up is for Tosca, so it is very much about 
exactly that. Not much shred or anything like that. Just nice softer leads and things like that. Whereas the seven string having you, you concert pitch tuning on top of that drop A, you can just play it like a normal guitar in that respect. And I do really like that. That's the biggest plus so far for me in this test. I think next what I want to do is go over to an ambient sound and try out just chords and see and see which one feels like there's something there, you know? Let's see. Back on the seven, now we're on to the Kemper with my Maxus profile. So let's see what happens. <laughs> As you might have been able to tell in that little tiny bit of playing, I was struggling to kind of go, oh, this has changed. Everything feels very different. That's one thing that I will get used to over time, but I definitely feel like with the baritone, it's it's a it's a six string reference point, you know, in a drop tuning, much like drop D, drop C, drop A, it doesn't make a difference. It's just lower, um, but it's six string interface. And therefore I, I just know my chord shapes and I know what I can do within that. Whereas this is more, it's interesting because you've got bigger range of notes, but definitely confusing. <laughs> That chord shape, which I would normally play like this, I don't know if you can see, but I would play like a root and then I'd have fret behind on G, in this case it's not G, but you know what I'm saying, and then on the B string, that would be uh, four frets apart, but on here, it's not the same. The chord I'm trying to sound is this. So it's kind of messed my reference point of, of chord shapes up, but that's kind of cool because that's kind of what I wanted is for it to feel different and, and make me think differently. That's a really nice chord. It's a shape very similar, but I've changed it up a tiny bit. Like what I've done is I've moved, where well, that would be on a six string is it would be, you know, um, EA barred, because I'm in drop, and then the D string would be um, sort of five frets up. So one, two, three, sorry, four frets up. One, two, three, four, as you can see, like that. And that creates the major sound. 
but then on the G string, that's where my swearing finger would go. But instead, if I've moved that up to the actual G string on the seven, now it creates this chord. way more uncomfortable. If you're riffing heavy stuff and shredding, it's like not that much different. It's almost nice having that extra string. But chords, that's going to be a bit of a longer journey, I think. Definitely not in the space of time this video is taken to film. Um, so let's just jump over to the baritone um, so that I can share my thoughts afterwards. <laughs> It's going to take a lot more work and effort to get over how much fun it is to just play around that ambient melodic chordal stuff with a six string interface. I use the word interface because it's like, you know, it's the same. Even though we're in drop A, um, it's still a six string guitar, so it feels very like home, which was always going to be the case. And. The chord voicings on that are wider, which is really cool, and it's something I definitely want to uh, explore over time. But I just thought right at the beginning of my journey with a seven string, why not just share with you guys? Because the last time you guys had some tips, so you like tune the bottom string down, try that out, and immediately it was more comfortable. There was plenty of useful advice about using seven strings there. So I thought, well, yeah, at the start of this journey, now that I own a seven string and I plan to spend, because now still, you know, maybe like 10 hours worth of time in my life spent on a seven string compared to on this which is days weeks months whatever you know so yeah basically that's what this video is about is me sharing my exploration between uh my thoughts on a seven string and a baritone because they can both be tuned to drop a but one has the concert pitch tuning which is really enjoyable to play lead with and just adding that extra dimension between playing lead in a, in a key you're comfortable with and, and a simple reference point to then jumping down to drop A and playing ridiculous filthy stuff, which is what I'd use this for. But then on the other hand, this is that warmth, dark, moody sound that I really love and I can, all my chord shapes work the same. 
Um, so it feels immediately more comfortable and I feel immediately more drawn towards this guitar for that purpose. But yeah, if you're in the market for either a seven string or baritone and you can't decide, maybe this video helped. You know, because if you're not bothered if you're not bothered about doing a lot of leady shred stuff, you just want to play lower, then I'd say a baritone because it feels and you play six string, should I say, then I'd say get a baritone because it feels the same. It's just lower. Whereas if you are wanting to get a guitar and you're up for a challenge of changing comfort zones. But really, what you want to do is get a guitar you can play really low with, but then you can still play up high and do all the shred stuff and do all the play all the same chord shapes that you know in the same concert pitch and have that extra versatility in range, then a seven string's probably more suited to you. Um, I don't know how things will change over this time. Maybe in a month or two or three months time I'll do another video talking about where I'm at with seven string and you guys can let me know if you think it's worth me pursuing or not. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching it. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Uh, like, subscribe and share and I'll see you all very soon.